Well, how's everybody doing today? I hope everybody's doing fine. This is a beautiful day that the Lord has made, and you ought to be glad that you are in it. I thank God for 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 for, for my viewers that takes times out to watch, and I hope that I'm encouraging you and helping you with your life with Jesus Christ and your life with God and helping you establish confidence and hope in your life, you know, and that your heart continue to grow. As your heart grow, you grow because your heart is your life in the spiritual realm. We have to understand that the heart is our life in the spiritual realm. So, you know, with that said, I want to give honor to God. I want to give honor to Jesus. I want to give honor to the Holy Spirit. And I want to give honor to God's words because all of them plays a part in our heart as shaping it and creating it and making it new and good. But you know, there's one thing that the word of God tell us that we have to take serious and we got to really take serious and we really got to be serious about it. And it tell us to guard our hearts. It tells us to guard our heart. So, you know, we need to know that we need to guard our hearts at all times. That means to protect it from evil so that we can live in the righteousness of the Holy Spirit that now dwells in us. So that we can give honor and praises on to God that we may glorify him in our life as well as his son Jesus Christ who has delivered us from sin. Who has saved us and made us whole. We got to thank him for that. I love you, Jesus, for all the wonderful things that you do for me and all the wonderful things that you do for others. But the title of this is going to be Guard Your Heart. And as I get ready to introduce this, I want you to understand first, the spiritual heart is the core of your mind. So you got to understand that the spiritual heart is the center of your mind. The core is where everything resides in your mind, which is the heart of the mind, which is the heart of the spirit, which is the heart of our life, the life that we live in our spiritual being, you understand? So it's the spiritual being that applies and make the physical being react. Without the spiritual being, there would even be no life in this shell that we live so we must guard our hearts we must guard our heart the heart is our inner self we have to understand that the heart is our inner self the spiritual heart make us who we are the spiritual heart make us who we are that's why you must guard your heart that's why you must guard your heart I got a writing here where it says the the center and seat of your spiritual life. The heart is the center and seat of your spiritual life. It is the soul or mind as it is the fountain and seat of thoughts. So the heart deals with our thoughts. The heart deals with our passion. The heart deals with our desires, our appetites, our affection, our purpose, our endeavors. So the heart plays a great part in our life. So we got to make sure that we got the right things in our heart so that we can have the right thoughts, so that we can have the right passions, so that we can have the right desires, the right appetites, the right affections, the right purpose, the right endeavor, the, 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 the right endeavors, you know. So therefore, we have to guard our heart and protect it so that we can do the right things. Because you have to understand in Proverbs 4.23, it tells us to guard our hearts. It tells us to guard our hearts. So go with me to Proverbs 4.23. And it said, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Uh, the it is the issues of life. So you got to understand the word diligence in order to really get the grasp of this verse. So it says, keep thy heart with all diligence. That means to be cautious. That means to avoid doing, to, that means to avoid dangers or mistakes. That means to avoid deception, to allow things in that is not, that shouldn't be in, that can destroy your good heart and turn it into an evil heart. Then it says, then it goes on to say, for out of it are the issues of life. So for out of this are the affairs of life. 
for out of this is how we deal with life. See, we deal with life according to our heart. We express ourselves according to what's in our heart. We reason with ourselves according to what is in our heart. So therefore, our heart shapes our life. Now, if you got a heart full of doubt, then you're going to be a doubter. If you got a heart full of sadness, then you're going to be sad. But if you got a heart full of joy, guess what? You're going to be joyful. If you got a heart that tells you you're strong, you're going to be strong. If you got a heart that tells you you can do this and you can do that, then you're going to do it. So we have to watch what's in our heart. If you got a heart that's full of hatred, and then you're going to hate. And you know us as being Christian, we got to live in love. We cannot keep our heart full of hatred. We got to have a heart full of love. You know, in our heart, we got to keep the peace. So we got to have a heart of peace. We got to have a heart of kindness, a heart of gentleness, because what's in us will determine us. We can't have a heart full of greedy desires, because then greed will control us. So therefore, we got to have a heart of moderation. We can't have a heart of desire and what somebody else get. We can't have a heart of envy and what somebody else do or say. Because we got to have a heart of encouragement. Because we are in the righteousness of Christ. And our responsibility is to encourage one another. Not player hate on one another. But if you got a heart full of player hating. Guess what you're going to player hate. But thanks be to God by Jesus Christ. That we've been delivered from that evil heart. That we've been delivered from that evil heart. See Jesus kicked evil out of your heart. I want you to take this personal. And understand that Jesus took or kick the evil out of your heart. Once you get with Jesus, he start cleaning that evil out of your heart by the power of the Holy Spirit that now reside in your heart. So you got to understand now that the Holy Spirit resides in your heart. So Jesus took the evil that was in your heart and put in the Holy Spirit, which is in, in your heart, which now take away that evil heart and give you a righteous heart. That take away that bad heart that now give you a good heart. So I want you to tell yourself and to know now that you have a new heart in Jesus Christ and that you have a good heart because of Jesus Christ. You are not defiled anymore. You are clean by the power of the Holy Spirit that now resides in you. Then you have to let the power of the Holy Spirit work in your heart. See, in order to guard your heart, you got to let the power of the Holy Spirit work in your heart. But first, in order for the Holy Spirit to really work in your heart, first of all, you got to understand, you got to believe that you have been born again. And you got to believe that you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. I'm going to go as far as I'm going to go. But that's what you got to believe. You got to believe that the Holy Spirit resides in you now and working on your behalf. You got to believe that the Holy Spirit intercedes for you so that you can keep right. So you got to understand that. You got to know that the Holy Spirit is working working in your heart and not only that you can't stop the Holy Spirit from working in your heart because the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit is only going to work in your heart if you allow it to work in your heart that's what you have to understand work in your heart then you said when you do you are destroying the powers of sin that once was in your heart then you are destroying the power of sin that once was in your heart. When you allow the Holy Spirit to work in your heart, you are destroying the power of sin. That's why Paul says sin have no more dominion over you. Evil have no more dominion over you if you allow the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, to work in your life. Uh, 
doubt have no more control over you if you allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life. So you got to believe and receive what the Holy Spirit give you. See, the Holy Spirit will give you faith. The Holy Spirit will give you hope. The Holy Spirit will give you confidence. The Holy Spirit will make it so that you can trust in God and you can do God's will. And when you're doing God's will, you are improving your heart and you'll find yourself doing things that you thought you couldn't do. For instance, if you couldn't hold a job, today you can hold a job. Uh, if you couldn't keep a marriage, today you can keep a marriage. If you couldn't respect your children or your children couldn't respect you, today you can respect either another because of the spirit that now dwells in you, which is the Holy Spirit that dwells in you, that creates a new heart inside of you that takes the that 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 takes the evil out and put the and put the good in. And now that you got a good heart, and now that you got a righteous heart, now you can be righteous to one another. Now you can honor one another. Now you can live with one another. Now you can have peace with one another because you got two good hearts operating together with each other in a relationship. So you understand that. Understand that you have a new heart. So you have to really understand that that you have a new heart. And then in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it tells you, you are a new creation. Matter of fact, let me just go read it. 2 Corinthians 5.17. I want to read it to you because I want you to really get it. 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. So what he's saying right there, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. So in order to be a new creature or a new creation, that means you got to have a new heart. So you was established a new heart through Jesus Christ and you became a new creation and you became a new creature. Then it says old things are passed away. See, your old heart is gone now. See, now that, 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 that one heart you had is gone now. Now you got the new heart that you got through Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So now you have a new heart and you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. You got to understand that. And when you start understanding that and you start seeing your new heart working in your life, and your new ways of doing things and the things that resides in you now, you know, you don't have hatred running you no more. You have love running you no more because your heart is full of love. You understand? You don't have doubt ruling you no more because now you know because now you know about hope and you know about faith and you know about trust. And that's in your heart now. Now you now you can believe in God and while you're believing in God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and God's word, this make it it make it where you be, where you establish within your heart that you can do things that you thought you couldn't do, and you find yourself doing them, and you find yourself achieving in life because of that, because you are a new person, because of the new heart that you have in Christ Jesus. You know, you are not who you used to be. See, when He changed your heart, He changed your character, and when He changed your character, He changed your personality. So who you used to be or who you used to portray, that ain't who you are no more. And that who that's not who you're going to portray no more when Christ is really working in your life. When Christ is really working in your life, then we really have to understand that. Then it goes on to say, then I goes on to say that now that you have a new heart, you have to guard your heart. Now that you have a new heart. You got to guard your heart. You got to understand that. You got to guard your heart. Yes, it's your responsibility to guard your heart. It's your responsibility to keep evil out of your heart through the power of the Holy Spirit that now dwells in you. Yes, you got a part to play in this. It just don't happen. You got a part to play in this. See, we live in a world. Then you say you have to guard your heart. Then I put the quotation on there, why? So now we need to know why you need to guard your heart. And I'm going to tell you why you need to guard your heart. 
We live in a world where evil is present all the time. We live in a world where evil is present all the time. You have been delivered from the evil heart. You have to understand that though. You have been delivered from the evil heart, but evil is always attempting to reside or move back in your heart. So because you've been delivered from evil, because you have a new heart, that don't stop it from trying to come back in. It don't stop it from trying to destroy you. It don't stop it from trying to harm you. And you know the only way that he can harm you is to reside in you. But you cannot let it reside in you. You got to keep your faith in Jesus. You got to keep being obedient to the word of God. You got to keep your focus on Christ. You got to believe in the power that worketh in you, that, that, that builds you up. And you got to encourage one another in this walk. I'm talking Christian perspective because when you get your life right with God, your physical life will also get better too in your surroundings. I'm going to tell you, there are nothing but blessings in following Jesus. But when you're following Jesus, you got to make sure that you keep a good heart. You can't let that evil heart sneak back in and that lion start lying and deception start controlling you, going around cussing people out, trying to fight everything you're running to, complaining about everything, walking around sad and frustrated because your heart is full of evil, you understand? But I came to tell you today that you've been delivered from that evil heart. You've been delivered. So you got to understand Understand now that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you because the spirit of Christ dwells in you. And if you let that spirit work through you, you're going to be all right. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And he that is in you, you have to understand this, he's in your heart. He's in your heart. He moved out the bed and he decided to reside in you. And he resides in your heart. And because he resides in your heart, he gave you different ways of thinking. He gave you different passions and desires. He gave you different appetites and affections. He gave you different purpose and endeavors. So you have to understand that. You got to guard your heart. You got to keep the evil out. But to show you that I'm not just talking, to be talking, go with me to Matthew 12, 43 through 45. Let me show you what evil, let me show you what evil like to do. Matthew 12, 43 through 45. It says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, that means when Jesus then took that evil spirit up out of you, he walks through dry places seeking rest and find none. So he go out and he's trying to find another heart to get into. You understand? But you know what? He couldn't find nobody hard to get into. So guess what he decides to do? Then he says, I will return into my house and where and whence I came out of. So now that he once was inside of your heart, Christ took him out of his heart. Now he decided that he want to come back to your heart. And when he has come, he find it empty, swept, and garnished. Ow! He find a clean heart. He wants to come into this clean heart now, you understand. And then, and then he want to come into this clean heart. And then... then he, then goes he and take with himself seven other spirits. He don't even come back by himself. He bring back seven more evil spirits to come to live in your heart. More wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell therein. And they come and live in your heart. And they say they dwell therein. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So now he's worse off than what he was. Even so, should it be also unto this wicked generation. So you got to understand 
you got to guard your heart at all times because the enemy is always trying to get back in. So you got to put on the whole armor of God. Uh, you got to walk in the righteousness and the truth of God. Uh, you got to keep the faith in Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit. Uh, you got to walk in faith and you got to live, understand me, and you got to continually to live by the word of God. Uh, it's got to be in your heart at all times. You got to meditate on it. You got to make it your life, your heart. Your heart bring forth the issues of your life, the affairs or the dealings that you do within life. So you must guard your heart from the evil that's trying to get back in your heart. And not only is it trying to get back in your heart, it's trying to bring work more evil in with it. But thanks be to God for Jesus Christ, because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. As long as you follow in Jesus, you don't have to worry about that evil coming back in because you are protected by the power of the Holy Spirit that now dwells in you and it will keep evil out as long as you be obedient to the spirit that's in you. As long as you be obedient to the spirit that's in you. Don't follow the flesh. Don't follow the world. Follow Jesus. Follow the Holy Spirit. He said you must live by the spirit. You must live by the spirit. Then it goes on to say in my closing, it said, God will guard your heart. God will guard your heart. But you have to humble yourself and obey God's word in order for God to guard your heart. In order for God to guard your heart. So, in order to get what I'm talking about, in this particular, I got a verse that I, a couple verses I want to read to you right quick. Let's go to Philippians 4, 6 through 8. Philippians 4, 6 through 8. And this is what it says. Be careful for nothing. So otherwise he said, be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, which is to humble yourself and be sincere, with thanksgiving, let your, let your request be made known unto God. Then it says on the say, and then, and then it goes on to say, in the peace of God, in the peace of God, it's God's peace. God established the peace in your heart, which past all understanding shall keep your heart. See, it's the peace of God that's going to keep your heart. So you got to stay in the peace of God in order to keep your heart. It said, which is past all understanding should keep your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. Keep your peace with God. Let me read that again. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. See, we can't even understand the peace of God. She'll keep your heart. I mean, he will keep your heart, your inner self, your heart. And minds, in your minds, the way you think, rationalize, whatever, but you got something still connected with the heart through Christ Jesus. But he keep it through Christ Jesus. But he keep it through Christ Jesus. Then he goes on to say, finally, my brother, now this will protect your heart. Whatsoever things are true, these are things should be in your heart. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. He said, think on these things. These are the things that you should be meditating on. These are the things that should be in your heart. You understand? You, you got to understand, David said, create in me a new heart. And God did, through the power of the Holy Spirit, through His Son, Jesus Christ. You have a new heart now. You have a new heart. And you should say, thank you, Jesus, for that. And then you can go on and say, 
I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Then you can go on to say, I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Oh, this should be in your heart. And then you can go on and say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And when you use them tools right there, you are guarding your heart. You are guarding your heart. So I hope this message was a blessing. I hope it touched someone. It's just a minor teaching about guarding your heart. Because we got to always protect ourselves. Something is always trying to take us out. But guess what? We got life in Christ Jesus. And never forget that. You got life in your heart because Christ resides in your heart. God resides in your heart. The Spirit resides in your heart. The Word of God resides in your heart. They are all one in your heart. And thank God for that. And remember what's in you and live out what's in you. In the name of Jesus. I hope this was a blessing to you. I hope this touched you. And I hope this leads you and guides you in the, all the righteousness that God has for you. You understand? What God has for you. May it be a blessing in Jesus' name. And he also said one thing. You would know them by their fruits. Because what's in their heart is what they're going to display. As you know, I'm on YouTube under Thomas Patterson. Feel free to go to my channel. Feel free to go to my channel on YouTube. Thomas Patterson is my channel. Then you know I do some tweeting now, so you can catch me on Twitter as well. Feel free to go to tweet. I mean, there's a lot of messages there that I have done over the years. You can go back. Some of them may even help you and bless you. To show you from the beginning to where I'm at now. And may God continue to bless you, lead you, and guide you. And I want you to know, I love you and God love you. And have a blessed week. Jesus is Lord.